Hello, Greater St. Matthew and friends. I uh, want to thank you for tuning in on another marriage Bible study. Uh, I'm Marty Harvey, and this is my wife. Benita Harvey. And uh, we'll thank God for the opportunity to always uh, spread God's word, always. And uh, we want to thank uh, our uh, pastor for allowing the opportunity because uh, you don't have to do that, you know. So, you know, this was uh, uh, the late uh, Pastor Ronnie's uh, vision, and uh, we we ha happy to have the opportunity to continue on with it. Uh, and we want to thank you for tuning in. We want to thank you for tuning in. We're getting a lot of good response, so uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead on this uh, open with a prayer. Uh, we have an interesting subject tonight. So, uh, dear Heavenly Father, we come once again thanking you for allowing us to see another day. Lord, we're going to decrease so you may increase, Lord. And, Lord, we want to thank you for everything you've done. And not only that, Lord, we want to thank you for letting, allowing us to do what we can do for you. is spreading your word, spreading the gospel, Lord, and being faithful. And, Lord, we want to thank you for everything you've done. Bless this marriage Bible study on tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Father God, we come once again to say thank you again for an opportunity to share your word with your people, Master. We pray right now that you would use us, Master, for your glory and your glory alone. It's because of you that we are here. It's because of you that we can do the things that we do. So we pray right now that you would allow us to touch the people, Master, that something is said that would encourage every married couple to continue to know that they need you in order for their marriage to survive. Lord, we love you and we praise you, and there's nothing that we can do without you. It's in your darling son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. So you've heard uh, the two of us uh, uh, open with a prayer, and the reason why we did it that way tonight is because of what, Benita? We want to talk about how important it is to have prayer in your marriage. How important it is for us to pray together in the marriage. And do uh, uh, you have our base scripture that we're coming off of? Yes. So we're coming out of Matthew 26, chapter 41st verse. Mm -hmm. Jesus says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay. Uh, yeah, we want to uh, talk about the importance of having... Uh, the spouses pray, pray with one another. We you know we go out and you know we pray for other people, you know, and uh, and sometimes we neglect to pray for our own spouses. Exactly. You know, you know, we pray for our spouses, but to sit there and pray with our spouses, just like we go visit the sick, you know, anybody call you and ask, can you pray for me? We'll do that with no problems and. And those, those, the, the little small things like that, uh, not, you know, sitting there praying with your spouse. You know, we should, we should really pray with our spouse before we get our day started, to be yeah. honest with you. We I should, agree. we I should, agree. we should. Uh, anything you want to say on that, Benita? No, I, I agree. We yeah. should open up when we get up in the morning before I leave the house and you leave the house. We need to cover each other. Right, together. right, right, right. So, uh, like I said, you know, we, we it's easy for us to pray for someone else, and and we got the one that's right there with us that we don't set up and and pray with. Right. You know, we we you know you yeah, pray for them. We, we pray for one another, but we don't sit there and pray together all the time. We do it here and there, but right. we like I say, y'all, we know we keep it real here. So. Uh, and uh, so for those that do that, hey, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Keep doing what you're doing. For those of us that don't, we need to get on that train. <laughs> we need to get on that train, get to get going in the same direction, you know. So, uh, but then let's, what's our first topic for the night on First that? topic, we're going to talk about how praying together can bring unity into the marriage. Yeah, see, yeah, bring unity. And, you know, we always talk about being intimate, being intimate. Boy, this is one way to be intimate. Right. 
You know, we sit here and we get together and pray together, and it doesn't do nothing but but make us closer. The Lord blesses us when we we give Him praise and we we start our day with Him together. You know, He He put marriage together, so everything that we do in our marriage should be towards Him. You know, for His, praise, glory. For his glory. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I needed that. I was You're stuck welcome. there. <laughs> yeah, it's for His glory. So uh, I, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, it made me think about it once we, you know, start talking mm -hmm. about it. You know, say, so, yeah, this this is a good thing. What, what do you have? talk about it a little bit? So when we pray together, like I said, it brings unity. But God wants us to pray together because. It actually helps us to be on one accord and to block the devil, you know. Mm -hmm. um, remember the scripture says when you're getting married, you know, this verse, and they say, well, God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Right. So if we just stay focused on God and we're coming together and praying on one accord, we can definitely keep God as the center of our marriage. Right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and I know some people say, well, man, what if the... Uh, the other one don't want to do it. And I'm pretty sure that happens. So, hey, you just keep trying, but you keep praying. Yes, exactly. You keep praying. You keep praying. And especially men. Men, especially us. We have to set that example. Right. We're held responsible for setting that example. God put the man to lead, but we have to lead by example. So, uh, men, let's, let's get on our game, you know. We, we have to get on our game. But if, if you're in a marriage and uh, the wife is the one that's, that has a relationship and, the, and the, the husband is not there yet spiritually, then the wife should continue to take it to God in prayer, mm -hmm. you know, and continue to pray before him and pray for him so that he'll eventually get there. But it has to be through God. Right, right. And we've seen it happen. We, we've seen it happen. We've watched it happen. That the, the, the man wasn't there yet. Right. And the wife continued to pray. She didn't hit him over the head. Yeah. She didn't take the Bible and beat him over the head like we've seen on TV. Mm -hmm. She just kept praying. Kept, she kept praying. Kept, 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 praying. Kept, kept living a Christ life yeah. before him. Before him. And, and, and he changed. And when he, when, he, when he caught fire, he caught fire. Right. Yeah, so... Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's just one of those things you have to work out. But the, the ultimate goal is to sit down and start praying together. Right. Okay, what's our next one? I was going to oh, close ahead. out on that. I was just going to remind them what Colossians 3 and 14 says. And overall, these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Mm-hmm. That's good. Man, that's real good. You have anything else? No, that's it. Well, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next one talks about uh, how praying together can uh, connect you spiritually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, you had that bond. Yeah, that bond. You had that bond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, being connected spiritually, you know, we're on one accord now. Mm -hmm. You know, we 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 uh, set an example for the, the children. You know, they see us on one accord, mm -hmm. and then what they what they gonna eventually do? They're gonna catch on fire and start praying. They, also. That's that's right. Just like our our grandchildren. Uh, there's a thing we do every year with them. We we uh, go on like they call them field trips, <laughs> but we get them and we do things with them. And the first day of school, what is it they want? They were looking for you to pray. They be looking for that prayer. Mm -hmm. They 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 will not, hey, Papa, you're supposed to pray. Mm -hmm. So now what we're going to do, we're going to have Papa and Nene pray with them. So, you know, they see us both doing it mm -hmm. and just to carry on in their lives, as their spiritual lives as mm -hmm. they keep moving forward and everything like that. Because they know that prayer is the key. They know that prayer is the key. And we do, y'all, we, we do have some uh, praying grandchildren. 
<laughs> I love it. I, I really love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You just had a prayer request today, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I love it. Uh, I love that they are in interesting in, in, interested in learning God's word and everything from the smallest one up to the oldest one. So that's right. a one. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, and I love it. Uh, and, and and our children watched us, and so now they're instilling in their children. And, you know, they're still watching us. Their children are watching us as well. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, anything else you want on yeah, that one? so in praying together, uh, you know, and, and watching your spiritual walk, as I pray for you and you pray for me, it allows each of us to know where we are spiritually mm -hmm. and how we're growing in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because like you say, if if I'm praying and I'm sincere and I'm opening, I'm opening up and I'm pouring my heart out to God, you can hear what I'm saying to God, and that way you can help me through this situ whatever situation that I may be going through. That may be a struggle for me as I'm praying with you, and I'm like I said, opening up to God. It'll help you to help me through that situation. Yeah, vice versa, vice versa. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Because, you know, we, we often have different conversations about life, everyday mm -hmm. life, you know. But when you can really sit down and, and just be open with your spouse and open in prayer and let them know where you're weak, let them know where your strength lies, it really, really helps the marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, we're done with that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, then. Let's keep moving. Okay, we're going to talk about how prayer builds camaraderie. All right? Camaraderie? Camaraderie, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. So spending time together, like we said, is a message that we, we are on one accord. You know, it also helps to bring about a bond that... You know, we'll talk about some things that we wouldn't normally feel comfortable in talking about when we're going through prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, some things I may not want to open up and share, but when I'm in the spirit, then God will lead me where I'm comfortable enough to open up and share things. And as I'm talking to him, you'll receive what I'm saying to God. Yeah, that's just like when I was playing ball uh, in the fire department, uh, just hanging out with the boys. You create that camaraderie with the, with with this. Everybody's on the same page. Everybody on one accord. So why not be that way with your spouse? Right. In in, in prayer. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So I, I it's it's not nothing new. Mm -hmm. You just have to be that way with your spouse. It yeah. gives your your spouse the opportunity to support you and to right. encourage you in your endeavors. Right. Right, right, right. And we've been real good at, I think we have, uh, there's always room for improvement. No one's perfect. All right. But uh, we've been pretty good at encouraging one another and, and the different things that come up in our life, you know, and, and uh, praying for one another, different things. Because, like I said, everything don't go, everything not peaches and cream. No. You know, so uh, when you have that, 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 Someone you can go to to rally behind you, get behind you, push you, and get you through, you know, along with God, yeah. along with prayer, and, you know. And also, you know, just like both of us have been through health challenges, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so therefore when you hear something that the doctor's telling you, and you know, whatever, you can actually pray with your spouse through the situation, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, and encourage them. With the word of God, right? You know, a lot of if if you don't have God in your life and you feeling your spouse has received some bad news, you can't encourage them with the with the word if you don't know the word. Right. So knowing the word really helps you in this situation like that. If they say, "Hey, you get a bad report from the doctor, you you, you don't know which way to go," immediately that spouse gonna step in and mm -hmm. start praying. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to take, they're going to tell you everything's going to be all right because we have God on our side. And if God be for you, then who can be against you? You right. know, it's just things like that that encourages your spouse mm -hmm. when they're going mm -hmm. through. And so to be, to build camaraderie, then you, 
that's one way of doing it. Like I said, you know, being that biggest support team because you shouldn't look for support outside of your house or outside of your marriage. It should be right there within your own marriage. Right. Not saying that you don't have family and friends to support you, but your your biggest cheerleader should be your spouse. Right. I remember when uh, uh, the great late uh, Pastor Emeritus, uh, he uh, used to say uh, was uh, the late the great late Sister Booker used to be out in the audience. He preached it. And he said it was like Sister Booker was out there saying sick him because she was his biggest his cheerleader. Biggest cheerleader. Right. She was his biggest cheerleader out right. there. And he, it was like, <laughs> he right. said it's like she's sitting up there saying sick him, you know. Because you, you always want your spouse to be in your corner. Right, right, right. He said if it wasn't no other voice, he, he, you know, he, he wanted to hear her voice. Mm -hmm. Knew that she was in his corner supporting yeah. him. Yeah. It gives, yeah. your, it gives yeah. you strength. Right, yeah. right. And, and and the courage to just run on, <laughs> you know, you know, to see what the end's going to be, right? Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that was, I, I, when he said that, that was so funny to me, boy. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like I said, we used to hear her voice all the time. Oh, yeah. 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 But that's, as a wife, that's what God expects of us, to encourage our husband. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when he's doing something that's Christ-like, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever. And, and and he's speaking. He wants his. Well, he wants to hear his wife. Everybody else can say Amen, but if I don't hear Amen from my spouse, it's like, am I really doing a good job? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else on me? No, I think that's that's good. You sure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move. Okay. And we're going to talk about how praying together can bring great results. You know, hmm. uh, it's important to pray together because the results of coming as a couple, it's not like I'm praying and I'm seeking God for this one thing for myself, mm -hmm. but we're doing this together. Mm -hmm. And so when I'm blessed, you're blessed. Right. You know? Yeah, the results. We've seen that. We've seen it many times. Mm -hmm. uh, that we praying for the same thing and God bless us. Yeah. You know, God, He answers our prayers. He answers you know. our prayers. You know that He's listening. Yeah. You know. He's listening. He's listening. Like I said, but you have to be patient. Yeah. Because there are some things He make you go through to avoid certain things. Right. He's looking out for fight for us, you know, so we have to be patient. Mm -hmm. We have to be very patient. Yeah, I've, I've heard people say, man, the Lord. He sure dragging his feet on this one. I said, just be patient. Yeah. I said, it's coming. I said, you just keep doing what you're supposed to do and be sincere in your prayer. Right. And know that God's God's timing is not our time. That's right. You That's know, right. We're, on, we're on a different time clock than what God is. Mm -hmm. He's going to move just in the nick of time mm -hmm. when he sees fit. You know, sometimes, you know, like Pastor Booker would say this, sometimes we're not ready to receive the blessing right. yet, so he right. has to prepare our hearts and mind in order to receive the blessing. Right. So it's not moving when you want to. It's going to be in his timing and when he knows you're ready to receive it. Right, right. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. But I, t I tell you, uh, like I said, this, this is something, what Sister Booker, we were just laughing about this uh, the other day, how Sister Booker, we, we, we didn't even see this coming. The marriage uh, ministry leaders, yes. and we were laughing about it. But she saw something, yes. and she was she was answering God's call. God right. used her to, to get us to this point where He wanted us to be. Right, and and even though we turned it down, right, she went to pastor anyway and said that we we, we were going to be over the the marriage ministry. Yes, she did. And, you know, so, you know, we have to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah, we have to be obedient. Exactly. And, and like we were discussing, there are times that God has given you the vision for something and has prepared you for it, but you're not ready to take that, that leap of faith mm -hmm. and walk into, you know, yeah. where God wants you to be. So he'll send someone like Sister Booker to encourage you to to come to the place where God wants you to be. Right, right. In order for you to get there. And so, like you said, we were talking about that, how she asked, and we both declined. 
and we thought it was over. But then when they get a phone call from the pastor, it's like, well, Sister Booker said that y'all were going to do this, so I need you to do whatever, whatever. So I never gave you the opportunity to say no. So it's like, okay, God, it's your way of yeah. us, you know, to this right, place. Right, right, And so, and we were very grateful for it because mm -hmm. we do, you know, it has encouraged us in a lot of ways. It's, it's brought us to a new level, you know, in Christ. And so it puts us on one accord where we have to sit here and discuss the lesson before we bring it to other people. Right, right, absolutely. So it really, absolutely. really does. It makes us sit down and yeah. study together. Study together. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, uh, like I said, I enjoy it. And we thank you guys for tuning in. We've been getting some good feedback. And, and we really appreciate that. It's not us. It's, it's God. And. We appreciate you tuning in, mm -hmm. you know, so uh, we, we love you guys. We really do. We really do. We talk about it. We discuss it. And uh, anything else, Benito? So we, well, I want to talk about how uh, praying together helps the husband to gain insight to, the, to his wife's heart. Right, right. You know, uh, it helps him to be considerate and to respect how she grows how she's growing in mm -hmm. Christ, you know. And then for the wife, you know, uh, hearing her husband pray, it really gives her the opportunity to see deeper into his heart because now he's so focused on, on what he's talking to God about. And if I'm listening, I can hear in, in you know, your sincere prayer as you're talking to God and pouring out your heart to God. It helps me see what what, what it is that you, you're asking God for and for me to be on one accord with you as you're going to God for that mm -hmm. particular thing in prayer. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you, you know, like I said, guys, it is what it is. God put a lot on the man. And you, we can try to dodge it all we want. You can't get out of it. Let me change that. We can't not get out of it because this God's plan. And God's plan is nothing else that goes above God's plan. No. Society tries and everything, but it's still, that is the only book that don't change. God's okay. word. Yeah, it remains the same. It, it remains changed. the same. Even though society tried mm -hmm. to uh, put marks on it and everything, it, it has not changed. The word of God remains the same. Mm hmm. Yeah. So, you know, let's let's get into the you know thing to get things started. If we haven't been doing it, 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 after a while, it'll catch on where it becomes a natural deal. It becomes natural that we do these things, just like we get up and do all other things. Right. It's a natural for us. We have to make that a natural. Because, you know, we, we discuss taking vacations, yeah, spending yeah. time together, day, night, you know, yeah. all that little stuff to keep the home fire burning. We do all of that, you know, because that's important to us. But we we doing all that and not having prayer. And prayer is the foundation. Prayer is the foundation. And prayer that is foundation. prayer is what will keep us together mm -hmm. because we can't do it without it. Can't do it without it. Yeah, we can't do it without it. Cannot do it without him. No. But that song say, without God, I would be nothing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, and and it's for us to make sure that what we say and what we do, that people realize it's coming from the Word of God. Right. It's not what I think, what you think. It's right. what the Word of God says. Right. You know, people say all the time, "Well, I, there's no manual on marriage," and you said this before, but the Word of God is your manual. For That's marriage. your manual. It's laid. The foundation is laid in the Word of God. You just have to read it. Yep. And if you read it, you know, then you can say, so if I go to my spouse and say, hey, I need you to do so and so and so and so, whatever, whatever. But if I can tell you that the Word of God says these are the things that you're responsible for doing. Mm -hmm. Or if you come to me and tell me that, hey, we're going to do it this way, whatever, whatever, because... This is what God is saying. Well, then, with me being in connection with the with God and the Word of God, I can follow you because I know you're coming from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to follow Him, follow your spouse when you know that He's basing everything on the Word of God. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So, you know, you 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 have to make sure you're yoked up with the you know, and, and I'm saying even if, if you're not yoked up, you can get there. Yeah. But it's gonna take some work. It takes some work. It's, and even when the ones that's yoked up, mm -hmm. it takes some work. Yeah. Yeah, because you have, Full -time to, say, you have job. to surrender. And sometimes we're not always willing to surrender and it's not to your spouse, but unto God. Unto God. Because yeah. if you, if you surrender and you submit unto God, then it's easier to submit to your spouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, it was somebody that said, "How can you be? Uh, how can you submit to your boss at work?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I I did say that because I I just hear so many women, so many women say all the time it's about you know their husband you know. He want me to do this and he want me to do that. You know, I'm not going to jump and do this. I'm not going to jump and do that. But then if your boss asks you to do something, you jump in and you're doing it. And I, my question is, well, why? Well, that's because my boss, he's my boss. And he's the one responsible for my paycheck. I say, but God said that he made you one with your spouse, not with your boss. <laughs> so if he made you one with your spouse, it <laughs> seems like you would move quicker for your spouse than mm -hmm. you would for your boss. Mm -hmm. Because when you move quicker for your spouse, then you're lining up with the word of God and you're doing what God has called you to do. Right. So. All right. So with that said, Benita, I, I, that was a good lesson, you know. We don't, they don't have to be all night. No. They don't have to be all night. And like I said, hey, we appreciate you guys. Uh, 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 Pastor GB3, hey, uh, we appreciate you. Keep bringing that word. Uh, we got Brother Kenna Basil, educational director. Yeah, Wonderful man. job. We got Deacon Garland, Sister Vera Green, marriage counselors at the church, Greater St. Matthew. Phone number 713-734-5670. That's 713-734-5670 if you need to talk to anyone. And uh, like I said, we love you guys. We want to thank Reverend Eric and Sister Christy Ozan. Mm -hmm. And we want to thank Brother Josh. All Brother right, Josh. Josh Book. Uh, taking care of everything, he, he and his crew over yeah. here at the GSM studio. That's a great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, hey, we're going to uh, have Benita close us out with a prayer. And uh, we just say, we, we just want to say, we can't say it enough. We love you guys. We appreciate you. Benita, you want to say anything? Good? Just want to encourage everyone to remember that prayer is the key. Mm -hmm. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been through, just remember that God, through you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Even when you don't want to do the right thing, if you take it to God in prayer, the Holy Spirit will direct your path. Amen. Amen. Somebody you want to go and close us out. Sure. Father God, we come against us today. Thank you for the opportunity to share your word. We pray that something was said that will help someone. Let them know that, Master, you are a God that loves each of us, Master. You are a God that has... Gave your, gave your son so that we might have a right to the tree of life. And, Master, we thank you for that, Master. We thank you that you loved us enough, even in spite of our disobedience, Master. You keep on loving us. You keep on blessing us. And you keep on encouraging us to know that you are right there standing by. You, telling us, you tell us all the time in your word that we can cast our cares on you because you care for us. So, Master, we come right now tonight saying, Master, whatever it is that what someone's going through, any married couple that's mm -hmm. about to throw in the towel, we pray mm -hmm. right now that they would just look toward you and allow you to direct their path mm -hmm. and to heal their hurt, Lord. We love you and we praise you and there's nothing that we will ever try to do without you. And in your darling son Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, good night, good night. Good night. <laughs>